Hi and welcome back to another lesson. In today's lesson, we are going to be learning about what is an absolute cell reference? Why do we need to use an absolute cell reference before replicating a formula? And then how to apply an absolute cell reference to a formula? Okay, so we are back on our mileage worksheet which we, in the previous lesson, we did a simple division formula here to work out the percentage and the answer was given in a fraction. And I did say not to worry about this fraction value at this moment. But let's have a look at today's question about absolute cell references. So the question is, or the questions, we've got two, do you know why we use an absolute cell reference in a formula before replicating it? And then use an absolute cell reference and replicate the formula in cell C3 to the cell range C4 all the way to C21. Let's discuss this first question is do you know why we use an absolute cell reference because this skill is something different and is crucial for formula formulas to work if you are going to be replicating them so let's have a look now this is the cell cell c3 that we are going to be replicating very soon but before we replicate, it is asking us to make it absolute. But guess what? I'm not going to make it absolute yet because I want to show you that if you do not re make a cell um, to this thing called absolute cell referencing, which we will discuss in a minute and get to learn what it is, I'm going to show you without making this cell an absolute uh, or, or applying any cell referencing of absolute. I'm going to replicate this and show you what happens if we don't. Ah, so here you can see it's throwing us a lot of errors in, in all these cells that we have asked Excel to replicate this formula into. Now, normally, when you replicate a formula, it works. It works wonderfully. You have no problem whatsoever. But in this case, it hasn't. Can anyone guess why it didn't work? Some of you may, you know, some of you uh, may be paying a lot more attention. I don't know. Um, but let's, let's have a little chat together. Now, if you have a look, Excel is doing B3 divided by B22. Now, generally when we replicate, which I have discussed in another lesson, that Excel always takes one value beneath it. So for example, if you have a look at this cell C4, and let's see what's inside there. Inside C4, Excel is using B4, which is absolutely fine. That's this cell here then divided by B23. Now B23 is this cell here. This cell is empty. There's nothing in there. Now because there's nothing in there, Excel is throwing an error. Because remember, when you replicate a cell, the first cell will go down by one, and the second cell, Excel will also ask it to use the next one down which it has for this cell. If I'm just, go I'm just going to double click on this cell and just show you. You can see Excel is using this one and then the next one down because we replicated from C3 because in C3 we were using B22. But if we are going by one down by replicating, you can see Excel naturally selects the next cell down. In the next one here, I'm going to show you that Excel has selected uh, one more further down. Let's go into the next cell. So you can see here now, if I double click, it's using the first cells is, is using correctly, B5 and etc, etc. But the total 
is constantly moving it by one cell down. That's the nature of replicating. When you replicate something, it always moves or selects one cell down. But we don't want that to happen in this scenario, in this case, because we want to somehow, if you, if you have been paying attention, you can see that for every one of these percentage calculation, we are using the distance for each of the destinations, but we're dividing the distance by the total. So in this calculation, we are using this total cell every single time. So now I think things are slowly starting to make sense to you. We need in our formula, the top one in cell C3, we need to somehow make B22 freeze or, or static, you know, so it doesn't change as we replicate. Do you think that's possible? Well, this is where this so-called absolute cell referencing comes in. We need to somehow make B22 so that it doesn't change to B23 and then B24 and B25 and so forth. We don't want to uh, we don't want this cell reference B22 to change. So this is where we use this absolute cell reference to make it not to change. It sounds complicated. It sounds like you have to do a lot of work. But guess what? I'm going to show you a very simple method of making a cell, uh, an absolute cell reference. Um, to, to make it uh, do the magic, basically. Honestly, it seems like magic, but it's simple magic, honestly. All you have to do is in the formula bar, now you can either do this after you've typed in um, the full formula, or you can even do it while you're typing the formula. It doesn't really matter. I'll show you both ways in a minute. Because we've already typed in the formula in the previous lesson, I'm going to show you, first of all, how you can apply to an existing formula that you have already typed in. All you have to do is click anywhere in this cell reference, B22, the one that you want to freeze. So anyway, it doesn't matter after, in between doesn't really make any difference. So I'm just going to click just after it. Once you have clicked after it, on your keyboard, you can press the function key. The function keys, remember, they are located at the top of the keyboard. And we refer, um, sorry, I want you to click on, on F4. So the function key, F4. Bear with me. F4. And by clicking on F4, you will notice what Excel does. It puts a dollar sign before the letter B and a dollar sign before the number 22. In another words, the column B and the row number 22. It puts in a dollar sign. By putting in the dollar signs, you have made this cell reference to an absolute cell reference so now if we replicate um, from this cell this b22 this one here will not change anymore let's have a look i'm just going to press enter to accept the change that i've just made to the formula there we are so i'm going to go back bear with me i'm just going to go back on our cell C3 and I'm going to replicate again and let's see what happens. Hopefully this should be the solution to this problem. Ah, look at that. We've got an answer in every single cell now. Now I'm just going to go into each cell and I'm going to show you if you keep an eye on the formula bar B22 should not be changing but the first cell in your formula will be changing automatically because we have not, remember, we have not made 
the first cell reference in this formula an absolute we haven't so this one should change and this one will not change let's have a look i'm, I'm just gonna go down each cell and keep an eye on the formula you can see the first one is changing but b22 is not changing anymore all the way down just to show you and make it clear for you so it has worked and this is what a what an absolute cell reference is all about now before i end i want to show you i'm just going to delete all this all this lovely hard work i'm going to show you if you were typing this in so equals b3 divided by b22 and then just press f4 straight away and it's made it absolute you can see it's put in the dollar signs for you and then just press enter you've got your answer and then you can replicate all the way down and everything should be working perfectly so let's go to the question and let's have a quick look do you know why we use an absolute cell reference in a formula before replicating it well the answer is if you don't the answers will not be correct it may even throw an error like it has done for us in this in this example that we did earlier so and then use an absolute cell reference and replicate the formula in cell c3 to the cell ranges all the way from c4 to c21 which you have done or i have done and you've been watching me so now you do understand why we use an absolute cell reference what is an absolute cell reference why we need to use it before replicating and you know how to apply it i just wanted to make this another thorough lesson because absolute cell referencing is the key when you're replicating it otherwise you will struggle so much or you may have to even calculate each one of these individually without having to replicate now that's going to take you a lot of time and you do not want to do that so always use an absolute cell reference where required remember in a calculation if you want one cell to remain constant not to change while you are replicating you need to make that cell reference in your formula to an absolute cell reference and to do that all you need to do is click anywhere in this cell in the formula bar and just press f4 on the keyboard remember the function keys located at the top of the keyboard and this brings us to the end of another lesson so please don't forget to like and share and hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so for many more tutorials to come my plan is to make tutorials on microsoft word microsoft powerpoint microsoft access microsoft publisher and many other applications to come so this is why i'm asking you to subscribe so you've got my channel there ready for any tutorials i put on there so until then i shall see you over in the next lesson please take care and goodbye